Brothers and sisters, may I ask you to please uh, stand up as we welcome the Archbishop of Manila, His Eminence Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle. morning and uh, since uh, this is also a meeting of communion and solidarity may I ask you to be one with me in standing all throughout my talk tumayo na rin lang naman kayo di pangatawan na ninyo now but if you want to be seated please now take this is your chance Oh, ayan. Iwan na na. Ako na lang ang nakatayo ngayon. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank the leadership of the BCBP for organizing this uh, assembly and for inviting me to uh, share with you this morning. In fact, I don't think what you will hear from me is new to you. In fact, maybe most of you know about this topic better than I do. And uh, many of you are members also of some business or management organizations. And I am afraid you might have heard me already in some of those uh, fora on this topic about morally upright, inclusive growth and rallying Christians to work together for inclusive growth. To illustrate the reality of growth that is not inclusive, meaning growth that excludes a bigger portion of the population, we want to listen to an observation registered by Pope St. John Paul II in 1987. And I quote, looking at all the various sectors, the production and distribution of foodstuffs, hygiene, health, and housing, availability of drinking water, working conditions, especially for women, life expectancy, and other economic and social indicators, the general picture is a disappointing one. Both considered in itself and in relation to the corresponding data of the more developed countries. The word gap returns spontaneously to mind. Pope John Paul II does not mince words. It is disappointing, he says. And if we reduce this topic without feeling disappointed, well, I suggest we just go shopping. I want to believe that I, are, I, I am before, how many are you? 4,000 disappointed people. Disappointed but not despairing. People who want to rise above the disappointment, not ignoring the disappointment, but using the disappointment for searching. Searching, reflecting, imagining. And as the topic calls us to do, 
rallying as Christians to address this disappointing and scandalizing reality that while there is growth, that growth excludes many. From the uh, perspective of the church and the social teachings of the church, inclusive growth is necessarily tied to good governance, sustainability, integrity. Personal, corporate, cultural integrity and also taking care of creation, preserving the integrity of creation. I have three short points to share with you for your reflection. The first, when we talk about inclusive growth in the light of the social teachings of the church, we realize that the approach to inclusive growth necessarily includes an ethic-inspired view of society, of the economy, of development. Not just a view, but a view that is inspired by ethics. So we are going beyond a purely sociological, cultural, anthropological view. We need to put on the eyes, the prism of ethic. For example, in the Christian tradition, may I ask you, business people, does providence play a role in your business planning? Is there room for providence to work? Or does everything depend on you and your plans? May magagawa pa ba ang Diyos? Do we leave room for God? Now, that leads us to another question. Only people who believe in providence will include trust as an element of planning. For Jesus said, do not worry about what you will eat and what you will wear. That's how the pagans behave. When you work, for food and clothing, you work not with the sense of despair, as though everything, everything will depend on your planning. Is there room for trust? Etayo no, kaalmusal palang tinatanong na ano ba ang mimiriendahin? Nagmimiriendah palang iniisip ano ba ang tatanghalian? At habang nagtatanghalian, may maaalaala. Ano ba ano? Are we Christians or pagans? Why do you worry about those things? Jesus says, Is there room for providence? Trusting. Why? Because if there is no trust in providence, the tendency is to preserve myself and to hoard as though God will not provide for me, as though there is no God who will take care of His creation. So there is no God, I will take care of myself. Is there room for trust in providence? How about the belief in the Creator? Who works? Who works hard? And we are merely stewards. It makes a lot of difference to think of myself as the main worker and myself as a steward. If I am a steward, I defer to the major worker and I will do only what the, the owner and the real worker wants to be done. Hindi po tayo may ari. 
katiwala lamang. Ang ugali ng may-ari at ng katiwala magkaiba. Ang dami sa mundo ngayon nagpapanggap sila ang may-ari. And if that is the prevailing mindset, do not expect an inclusive growth. Another Christian element, giving and sharing. The common good, the good of the others. But that will require self-denial. And I am inviting everyone, please do not say, our company gives, shares. You have to analyze, you have to evaluate what type of giving or sharing. For the fact of the matter is, not all giving is altruistic. Some types of giving is very egoistic. Malapit na naman ang eleksyon. Ang daming magbibigay. Please, don't tell me it is altruism. It is giving so that I can get something in return. In fact, some give and the giving violates the dignity of the recipient. Ba't kayo tumahimik? <laughs> the ethic of looking at others not in a condescending manner, seeing in others a neighbor, a brother, a sister, not simply as a client, not simply as a beggar who clings to my benevolence. An ethic-inspired vision of society reminds us that we are all beggars and that we are all givers. Ilan lamang po yan. I can go on and on and on, pero ilan lamang ito. No? When we think of inclusive growth, we think of society, of the economy and development. The social teachings of the church reminds us an ethic-inspired view must be included. And all of these categories must enter if we want to promote inclusive growth. The second point, po, inclusive growth, growth that will include everyone. And so we ask, why? Is, is it not happening? If some are included, who are excluded. Pope Francis says plainly in his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, he says, well, we need to include the poor. We need to include the poor so that they will experience full human development. But for Christians, for Catholics, the inclusion of the poor in development is not just a sociological, political, cultural need or demand. It is deeply theological, meaning it is a demand of God. Oh, mga Kristiyano, 
mga katoliko, yung pa naman ang nilagay yung topic. Hindi ako ang namili nung topic. Ho. Catholics rallying for ano. Ayan, sige. <laughs> Kaya, at yun ang sinasabi ni Pope Francis. Our, our involvement in this whole project of inclusive growth should not be motivated by sociological, political, cultural reasons. For us, there is one fundamental reason. God. In the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, we hear over and over again, God hears the cry of the poor. If the people on this earth do not hear the poor, there is someone who hears them. God. If they are not included here on this earth, aha, they are included in God's heart. And in Deuteronomy 15, verse 9, it is said, The poor person might cry to the Lord against you, and you will incur guilt. If the poor come to us and do not get a hearing, they will turn to the God and God will hear them. And those who did not listen to them will incur guilt. O pwede na akong tumigil dun eh. <laughs> For us, that's the fundamental reason. We are not trying to compete with any country. We do not want to produce any record or statistic. For us, Christians and Catholics, it is a commitment to God. And so I ask, I, I already asked some of these questions in, in, a, in a meeting. If we are serious about inclusive growth and including the poor, I ask the following questions. Are the poor included or mentioned in your business visions? When you review the vision statement of your establishment, are the poor mentioned? Inclusive, inclusive. They include. Di naman. How about in our mission statements? Do we mention the poor? O puro na lang productivity, productivity. If we are serious about inclusion, they should be present there. In our planning, in our goals, are the poor included? Are the poor included in determining our policies about what to sell, what to produce? What development is good for the poor? Pope Francis talked about ideological colonization. Sabi niya, we are imposing on the poor our view of development. Pati ba naman doon, hindi ba sila pwedeng magsabi kung ano ang gusto nilang development? The progress that we are proposing, on what is it based? Did we hear the voice of the poor in planning the type of development? When you go to your employees, are there training programs to make the poor central in management, in skills development? Are our labor practices within the compass of uplifting the poor among us? Last year, I was invited to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And they asked me to share with them uh, 
There were many workshops, but in one workshop where I participated, they asked me to share something about authenticity. It was a whole workshop on authenticity. I, it was fascinating. There was a chef, a Peruvian chef, who, he said, one area that needs to be converted is the world of cuisine, culinary. Because they advertise authentic Peruvian food. And then you taste, Nandadaya naman. Even in the kitchen, walang authenticity. Ano ba kakainin mamayang lunch? Huwag <laughs> ah, na lang ilalabel na authentic ganyan. Sige ka. And then somebody who is uh, uh, in the, the world of arts and museums, he exposed uh, this anomaly na you pay no, to go to a museum and if your eye is not trained, hindi mo alam na hindi pala authentic pieces of art yung naka-display. Naka so sabi niya, the world of arts, vulnerable also to inauthenticity. And then, merong isa nag ano ng products and she was challenged by, I won't mention the, you know, the company. So, sabi niya, have you tested our products? And the, 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 the woman said, yes, we have. As far as the contents of your products are concerned, they are according to what is written in the label. But you have not revealed to us your labor practices. So we cannot declare your products authentic. Aha! Do you use child labor? How are women treated? So we withhold judgment on the authenticity of your product. And then they asked me to share about becoming authentic human beings in the world of virtual reality. How can you be real when you are bombarded by the virtual? O yung iba sa inyo, hindi naman dito nakatingin eh, doon. O, o not saan ang real? Ah, yan. Dito pa lang eh. Hirap na hirap na tayo eh. Huh? And this is happening in the World Economic Forum. No? I have no time to share with you that, no. But interesting. But what I'm saying is, in the search for authenticity, nowadays they include that. Are you mindful of the poor? How are you treating laborers? Are you cheating your clients? Is your advertising true? Etc. So, inclusive growth, who are the ones excluded? The poor. And if we want to include them from visioning to production and selling, are they part of our consciousness? And finally po, para naghihintay na si Secretary Simpson eh. Gustong gusto na niyang umakyat dito eh. Uh -huh. Baka i-bulldozer tayo lahat niyan eh. <laughs> Gumawa yan ng highway bigla <laughs> coming <laughs> papunta rito. No? Uh, so let me just recap. No? The first is an ethic-inspired vision. Secondly is uh, including the poor. And third, for us, we should work first on ourselves. Are the poor included in my consciousness. Baka madali silang isama sa mga statements, sa ano, but for us. And here, we go back to what Pope Francis 
has been harping on personal encounter. For reality is greater than ideas. The poor that we want to include in growth, they are not an idea. They are human beings. And they, and they should be part of our human consciousness, of our human dreams, of our human pains and sorrows. If we are serious about including the poor, let us work on our consciousness too. But how can that happen? We go back to person-to-person -person encounter. Let us encounter the poor and realize that they are just like us, with feelings, with dreams, with heartaches, but with a lot of goodness. And it is not just a matter of giving them something, but also learning from them. They possess a lot of wisdom that could make the country grow and could make our businesses grow. If they are not included and not heard, I don't know what type of growth and for whom, for, for whom that growth is being proposed. Personal and corporate conversion to inclusive growth would greatly be uh, promoted when we allow the poor people to be part of our consciousness, to be part of our lives, to prod us to action. This is something that Pope Francis showed us during his visit. He came as the supreme pastor. He came as the supreme teacher. But close range, what did I see? As I accompanied him in some of the uh, meetings that were not open to the media, what did I see? I saw a student. I saw a learner. I saw someone who trembled before the poor. I saw someone who was reverential towards them. I saw someone who opened his mind and heart to them so that he could learn from them. Let not inclusive growth be a lofty idea. We are talking about human beings. And it is in human encounters that we get human insights on inclusive growth. Let me close with a story that involves Pope Francis. You know that there was one girl who died in Tacloban. No, Christel. And the following day, after the encounter with the youth in UST, remember that girl who cried? No? After that encounter, we met the father of Christel. I was asked to join, to join the Holy Father uh, to do some translations because the father might want to speak in Filipino and so on. So I saw this simple man with a brother-in-law, an uncle of Christel. And in that small room, the Holy Father so gently, lovingly told the father how he feels sorry for the pain that he is experiencing. And uh, he assures the father of his uh, solidarity and communion. And the father started telling his story. He said, 
Crystal is my only child. And with my wife working in Hong Kong as an OFW, my life revolves around Christel. Now she is gone. I don't know what to do with my life. And the Holy Father assured him, yeah, painful, but your daughter died meaningfully serving others. And then the father said, you know, I had already decided not to attend any of the papal events. I fear big crowds. I had already decided to follow the mass in Luneta just on television. But then my daughter died. But because of that death, I am before you, Holy Father. Because of that death, I see you not on television, but close range. Then he said, probably my daughter arranged this, but she had to die. I was tempted not to translate it to the Pope. As I did not know how the Pope would react. No. Would he think that this father is minimizing the tragedy or what? But I had to do my job. So I told it to the Holy Father. Lo and behold, the Holy Father told me, tell him. Tell him, I admire his faith. Tell him, his faith is so deep. I admire him. This is the Pope. According to the Catholic tradition, he possesses supreme universal authority. But in his mind and heart, the poor do not only exist, they are his teachers, they are his model. He was a singular model of inclusive growth. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, your attention. Salamat po.